anyways, hopping into the game here. So we got Suicune versus Charizard. I think I would say that Suicune is perhaps Mew's best, um, most comfortable character. I think the one he's played with the most and knows the most about. Therefore, of course, Charizard is the classic that he has. Rathmue is actually running Cresselia, not a very popular choice ever since the DX nerfs to it. Whereas it used to be a um, very powerful heal and synergy gain, they both large, but ever since DX dropped, they have been changing the DX. It's not ideally as powerful as it used to be. Anyway, Rathmue in a pretty pretty good early lead right now. Doing a nice job keeping Zephyrl out. Alright, so if I'm not I think I have heard that this is a matchup in Squeakin's favor. Um, his anti-air gain, especially with the um, Aurora Beam, like the upward Aurora Beams, and also, I don't remember the exact input, but the um, the headbutt for it, I think that one, are very, very strong anti so which really hurt Charizard's aerial approach options. Uh, Rathy is doing a very nice keep away game right here. Excellent counter right there, just not, not falling for any of Charizard's five stance shenanigans. Ooh, not falling for the CADC grab right there. That is a downside to Jarzard. His CADC is among the slowest in the game. So things like CADC grab like that are pretty, pretty easy to react to. Just putting up the ice ball right there and snagging the aerial approach. Uh, Rasmus is just doing a very, very nice job of countering Zephyr's approaches. And now Zephyr's getting in right now. He's going to get some damage off, off the EV. Okay, that's a nice, that's a nice choice. <laughs> that upwards counter just beating out all of Charizard's options when he goes in. Oh, that is very punishable. Here comes a seismic toss, buffed by Eevee and a crit. Bam, that's a lot of damage. That was like, the total effect about 240 if I look that correctly. Alright, oh, some big damage to complain with. Zephyr really pulling this through here. This thing about power characters. That's about power characters, that they can do some big damage when they get in. Alright. Rasmu going into first, using some his JYZ to just try and bait options right here. The CDC game is going to land. I don't think he's going to kill though, because I think it doesn't have 200. And Zephyr is at 200. And let's see. Oh, not quite enough to do it. Let's see if Zephyr is probably going to be popping his first here pretty soon to be able to counter it. Oh, almost enough damage to kill right there. Rasmu just trying to find one last hit right there. And the Aurora Beam is going to snag it right there. Rasmu taking game one right there over Zephyr. And Zephyr really just. Then um, I will suggest it's going into the burst in that um, situation. Um, he was just there's um he had very very little chance doing that comeback without his burst. I will have suggested going into that, utilizing his burst as much as he could because Charizard's burst is a very 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 powerful and scary burst to go up against. He might have been able to take a bit more advantage of that. But anyway, going into game two here, rather than sticking to his um, Cresselia there, I would suggest perhaps selling Cresselia because the um, it's speed um, and one once per match usage limit. It's really, really hurt it. Um, I was just maybe things like Espeon, who wants just pure healing. Ooh, okay, so that's a nice hit right there. Zephyr just not came in, uh, not came in any chance of the time. A wall spot, but not able to get off of it. Ooh, okay, so Zephyr had a nice idea going for the um, man counter, which he does aim up. And Zephyr was really doing a nice job um, predicting it and Alright, so now he's going uh he's going Reshi Ram, which is an interesting choice. Um it can be uh, it can really cover a huge air zone with Charizard sticks into the air, so I can be a nice call out. But anyway, both players are now in first. Alright, alright, that Zephyr in a very nice, very nice lead right now. His own burst is battle of the first right now. Let's see, Zephyr though, put on some pressure. Is this a punish? Ah, uh, not quick enough for it to be one. There's a shield break though. Ooh. And. Alright. Alright. Um. Nice little knife still going here. Alright, so we can go. It in a pretty big health deficit though. And if you can keep a nice um, keep away game going, he might still be able to get a chance of this. Alright, goes for a very risky fire punch. Oh, it does snag it on those last few pieces of play, but... Okay. Yeah, not too much. They're snagging that victory. Zephyrl taking game two right now. Alright. 
Now we're going into game three here. Zephyrol is able to bring that bag right there. Able to adapt very, very, uh, very, very well. Let's see. This could be anyone's game. I think um, it's kind of been going back and forth. Rasmus had a pretty dominant game one, but Zephyrol really, really made game two work out in his favor. So this could go either way. All right. So we got a support change from um, Rasmus, I believe. I saw it was to Espeon on Brown, which I very much agree with. It's a very, very strong um, support choice for going up against Charizard. Alright. Ooh, not falling for that grab. Rasmus getting that first homing and getting to the Alright, okay, kind of falls into that um, upward counter. We could have got more if to regular than upward. Ooh, Aurora Beat is barely getting um, out uh, right as those camera frames ended. We're actually going for a lot of CADCs, trying to bait out something here. Snags that for a right wing put down the shield. Here comes Frogadier. Um, kind of sounds a choice, but that's, he hasn't even Frogadier before. He's using TV. He has a combo off of it and win that field. It'll be big. Oh, Rasmu. Ooh, nice combo, ending it with Hydro Pump and ending it on the wall spot there. Zephyr really in a not, not too good position. And there's the counter snagging out. Like the Rasmu going to. Oh, actually, both players actually have their burst ready to go. Um. So Zephyr might want to be using that um, burst to put on some really, really strong pressure there. Oh, upward counter just right away, being out all of those air options right there. Ooh, punishing it with the Flare Blitz right there. Nice, nice. Air cuttering and ending with another flare, but doing some good, good damage here from Zephyr. Excellent mirror coat from Rasmu. He'll be out the projectiles. Ooh, Zephyr putting on some pressure and not to want the flare blitz right now. And Rasmu just not in a great situation this round, but those flare blitzes are costing some recoil health. Zephyr is waiting for an Optimus uh, to fight. All right, but now Rasmu going into his burst. Ooh, there's a nice, nice tech grab right there with some helming. Find some sort of advantage, but Zephyro just needs to get one good hit in, and this could be what he needs. And that's a burst punish right there, and that's gonna be it for that. There, we're going to game three, round three. Let's go. This is gonna be still either person's game. Both players are going to with very, very little burst. Zephyrl has a pretty nice early lead right now. <laughs> what was that? Some shield dancing from Rasmi. All right, trying to just get some sort of aggro response from Zephyrl, I suppose. Ooh, an excellent bait of the Umbreon right there. Did not punish it though. Let's like, say point thrower. Oh, no seismic toss punish, unfortunately. All right, Mega Charizard coming out to play. Rasmi does not have a, his own burst anywhere near to be able to combat it. Ooh, excellent spacing right there. Oh man, Rasmus is in a very, very tight situation right now. He has to take that chip, but no longer has to fear um, Charizard Burst and the Flare Blitz. Snagging the victory. Zephyrol going 2-1 over Rasmus. Knocking Rasmus out of the bracket and advancing himself into farther into the loser side. But anyway, guys.